it's really dealing with people like people because ultimately that's the only way we're going to be successful. Being on the floor ourselves, going to integration and test, recognizing this is a hard life and it really stresses your family if you're there on Christmas Eve or whatever holiday, your summer break that you're spending in the lab. I've been there, done that. I know how it feels. So just thanking them. We want to understand what's there and really make sure that we all have the same kind of playing cards and the same sense, kind of the sincerity and the belief uh, and also the understanding and alignment behind the vision of the particular program or project we're working on. For us, the flagships are mostly direct admissions. We come up with a really strong set of requirements. We actually build in reviews, a, a system level review early on to have a look in which we actually scrutinize whether or not we have the right kind of size and kind of balance between technical depth and scientific importance. For me, you know, a, a really good example that where integration and test was handled the right way, I believe, is uh, with a recent mission of Parker Solar Probe. You know what the what the managers did from the beginning of of all the reserves that were headquarters held, they took close to half off the table for just the back end of it. And basically said, we're not gonna use any of this. That reserve stood there and everybody knew we could use it at the very end. We could even go to another window with the reserves. I thought I was really wise. What that did is it basically created the scrutiny up front to not spent that uh, kind of money on things that, frankly, where hard decisions would have better, been better used instead of money to solve issues. Like, do we really need that? As opposed to, oh, we have to reserve, let's just spend it there. What I first time built it, especially of a, of a project of the size that we tend to look at, whether it's a landing on Mars or whether it's web, whether it's gateway, whether it's, you know, whatever the projects are, these technologies that you looked at, even if you did the TRL work and all the technology, they start interacting with each other. So what happens is the unknown of this technology starts driving the, the other technology and all of a sudden, even though in a box they work just fine, in a system they don't. And so, so really, kind of when you do a first build, the most important part is to recognize that it's a system. I want to give you, the engineer, the space to work the problem. And you know, like, let's look at where the constraints really are kicking in. See, it's not a one size fits all, but the discussion in a kind of a culture of open communication, the discussion of when do we need to actually come in and solve the problem with outside of her, you know, expertise area, because the solution may be, you know, over there in mechanical, not in electrical. But share should be the instinct in every case. What is critical is, is to have these levels of oversight at, at the level of being part of that team uh, across the entire project. Ultimately, what we're doing here is a deeply human endeavor in which we're stretching uh, people and teams to places where they have not been. And being part of that is both a tremendous opportunity and exci exciting to everybody, but it's also a challenge. So that art of management that we've really uh, talked about is something that deserves as much attention as the process uh, itself.